Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. Let's begin. All MBTI personality types have a host of pleasant traits and strengths, but they carry with them some weaknesses and negative traits too. And in these dark tendencies, there can be latent psychopathic urges that may emerge out of circumstance. Dr. Prakash Masand, a psychiatrist and founder of the Centers of Psychiatric Excellence, noted certain traits as commonly shared among people with psychopathic tendencies. These include social irresponsibility or violating the rights of others. They also include an inability to distinguish between right and wrong and showing a general disregard towards safety and responsibility. Before we begin, we want to remind you that the MBTI is a personality inventory designed to roughly identify a person's personality type, split into 16 categories. As such, it is a list of rough tendencies rather than strict classifications. Also, this is not made to attack anyone or any personality type who may display these signs or anyone diagnosed with psychopathy, but rather to understand them and bring more awareness to the topic. With that said, let's get started. Let's begin with the introvert spectrum of the MBTI. Number one, ISTP. As an ISTP, there are a lot of things that you enjoy that don't actively involve people. You may even find as if people get in the way of your goals. As such, these antisocial tendencies make ISTP likely candidates to have psychopathic tendencies. Number two, INFJ. As an INFJ, you are a natural in getting to the root of people's hearts, moving them with your words and mannerisms. While many INFJs come from a perspective of empathy and goodness towards others, more than a few can have harmful ideals and distorted intentions that are potent in influencing a group of people. Number three, ISFJ. ISFJs are one of the types who are very unlikely to be psychopaths. Whew. They are nurturing, loyal, and caring. The only time when a psychopathic tendency may emerge from an ISFJ is when you get too controlling or possessive over your partner, relying on manipulation to get your way. Number four, ISFP. Are you impulsive and desire freedom? You may not be the best planners or strategists, but you are physical thrill seekers that care little about risk. Whoa there you are very easily able to try out the road less traveled and may even cause harm to others while you're at it. Number five, INTJ. Think of a villain at the top of a high rise skyscraper and all the floors below filled with goons and traps with the explicit perfect of disadvantaging you and making your way to the top. That villain, the INTJ. INTJs are more than likely to be schemers, plotters, and convincing overseers with their penchant for strategy and low incidence of emotions, a main in their function stack. Also, they have no problem letting others do the dirty work for them. Think minions, but they sure are cute though. Number six, ISTJ. ISTJs may not be the mafia boss, but they're the essential troublemakers that get the dirty work done with their ability to do routine yet crucial, mentally challenging tasks. Your cold and detached demeanor make you prone to have psychopathic tendencies or at least be swayed to reveal it if an influential force persuades you to the dark side. Number seven, INFP. It's hard to imagine an INFP as the stereotypical psychopath. They're just too kind-hearted and sensitive to take up the role of harming others. But if or when they do end up in the psychopath business, they'd probably do it for a cause that is for a common good or for a value that's driven on justice or ideals. Yeah, it's still admittedly hard to wrap your head around. Number eight, INTP. They are cold logisticians and great rationalists that have varying degrees of sociability depending on who you're talking to. You're open-minded and take into account all possibilities and there's always an underlying logical reason for what you do. And since your feelings rarely, if ever, top the stacks, you can at whim choose to uphold logic over empathy, which is to say promoting psychopathic tendencies to an extent in the process. Okay, okay. You've all been waiting. So without further ado, let's examine some extrovert personalities and their psychopathic tendencies. Number nine, ENTJ. Natural planners and a commanding presence that can be felt in a crowd. An ENTJ's ambition and power hungry tendencies allow you to naturally take up major roles, which is something you love. With this desire to lead, an unhealthy ENTJ can easily forego the rights of others in favor of the end result, getting things done their way selfishly for their goal. Uh-oh. Number 10, ENFP. A free-spirited individual. People can sort of pinpoint what energy an ENFP exudes 
since your mannerisms are open gestures and indicative tone shifts. This can make it harder for ENFPs to possess psychopathic tendencies, as most of the dark energy you harbor is mostly feelings within yourself rather than something that is imposed on others. So number 11, ESFP, free-spirited and present-focused. An ESFP loves the thrill of action and can have little regard towards others if you don't find it fun or gratifying at the present moment. This self-servicing attitude can be rooted in a greedy desire for fun, which can justify selfish and potentially psychopathic actions. Number 12, ESTJ, a cold businessman or bossy authority head that only thinks of driving revenue to the bottom line. They know how to capitalize on people's skills and have a penchant for bossing others to act. And for the most stereotypically fitting types, they do it in an almost dictatorial fashion with no regard for others. Very possible psychopaths. Number 13, ENFJ, charisma personified. You are capable of adapting your personality with your conversation partner. Not all ENFJs are psychopaths, however, but the inborn charisma and ability to sway a crowd is a powerful tool that can easily hide a sinister intention behind it. Number 14, ENTP, often detached people seeing the world through the lens of logic and possibilities. You are fond of challenging the realities and ideas without much consideration for personal values and more so for the fun of it. This makes the empathy threshold lower than most types, making it very possible to harbor psychopathic tendencies. Number 15, ESTP, reckless and impulsive with no regard for others. ESTPs are likely candidates to have psychopathic tendencies as well. You see things based on the results and the impact something has on others. Many authoritarian bosses fall under this category too. And number 16, ESFJ, warm and compassionate. The ESFJ on the surface may outwardly exhibit non-psychopathic traits, but just like the ENFJs, you have a charisma and charm about you that can draw in a crowd, only without the ability to sustain a long-term calculated plan. Thus, you're not the likeliest candidate to be psychopathic. You are unique and encompass a multitude of traits. However, having traits that may lead to psychopathy does not mean you're sure to embark on that road. Through these MBTI classifications, you only see the multitude of characteristics and what they mean. They're in no way a predictor for a confirmed human behavior. So if you harbor traits regarded as psychopathic by the MBTI, please do not consider it prophesizing. It describes the trait, not who you are. But if you feel increasingly resonant with such traits, consulting a professional is always a good idea. Does your type have psychopathic tendencies? Feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts, experiences, or suggestions. If this video is helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there unaware of the MBTI. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.